Hello, everybody. <clears throat> another night. Another time. Don't really have a specific topic I want to get into tonight. Sorry for the background noise and everything, but... Sort of been an interesting evening. Um, ran up with my, my dad earlier to uh, Lexington, Kentucky area. He um, His iPhone wasn't charging properly, so we went to the Apple store to get his iPhone either fixed or replaced. He ended up getting it replaced, so he's all good there. I've been sending out some... Uh, messages to people to see if anybody wants to come on this late at night <laughs> it's hard to get people to sort of come on this late in the, at night it's 2 27 <clears throat> 2 27 in the morning here so again sort of night owl type person i am so there's a couple that are still up but no responses yeah it's all good i'll just do one here by myself if i have to <laughs> Yeah, so, but uh, <clears throat> when I, when my dad and I were heading up to uh, Lexington to the Apple store, it reminded me, you know, the whole uh, cult of Apple, you know, the whole, the whole Apple store, you know, it's just a very homogenous group of people who work in the same place at the same time, and they all have sort of the same beliefs and the same, <laughs> you know, the same everything, and, and uh, it reminded me of the... Uh, movie it's on netflix i think right now iron sky uh there was i there's two movies there's uh the original and a sequel iron sky the first one it's sort of about a it's sort of an alternate history of uh nasa and the apollo landings and uh it's sort of based on the conspiracy that the nazis w uh, went to the moon after world war ii and established a base there and uh Sorry about that. And then in the second one, it was like 35, 40 years after the first one, I guess. And there was like a nuclear holocaust on Earth. You know, like everybody, all the countries on Earth nuked each other. So the second movie was sort of when there was there were refugees from various nations on Earth. And and on the, the Nazi moon base, <laughs> there were um, it's just fantastical plot um it's just yeah it's, it's it's insane but i think anybody who's sort of a fan of history and alternative history would be uh sort of into it but um there was a <clears throat> down in some corner of the building there was like a, a the church of apple or the the cult of apple and you had all these people who were like apple worshipers you know <laughs> they, they had like their device and and uh that was like their religion um I wish I could find a clip of it. If I, I'm recording this, uh, I'm not posting it live, but uh, I'll see if I can find a clip of that scene. Uh, I tried to find one earlier, but I couldn't. So if I have to, I'll go out and do a screen cap of the, the movie itself. But this was really hard to find, but I finally found uh, a clip from the, uh, the movie here. Let me uh, play that and then I'll cut it into the video here. It is a perfect mechanism. Now let us pray for our Holy Father, Steve, to shed light on us. <laughs> Steve. Look at your e-prayer app. The cult of Apple. Their iPads. There is somebody here who does not appreciate flawless design. Cult of Apple. That's exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> Someone who considers themselves a power user. Power user. That would be me, I guess. Ugh. You. Let me see your phone. Hand it over. Jailbroken. 
<laughs> Why don't you want to be like everyone else? Jailbroken. <laughs> Is our selection of default wallpapers not sufficient? Do we not provide you with... Not conforming. Not conforming to the masses. With an adequate choice in ringtones. <laughs> you know what happens when unauthorized changes are made. <laughs> <laughs> You get bricky brick. I'm just gonna cut it there. <laughs> yeah, pretty good stuff. <laughs> the cult of Apple. Um, after the Holocaust, you know, they're still worshipping their devices. So, I think it was Steve Jobs, I think, was mentioning it. I don't know. But, yeah. So, let me check my phone again see if anybody no no responses man i guess everybody's asleep or something yeah it is like a thursday night if it was a friday there would probably still be some people coming down from the pub and just getting home and that would be maybe more willing to to get into one of these with me I, I did text one of my friends who I know sort of up all the night. He all night he sort of posted a recent message. Uh, I guess it it told me it was posted uh, two minutes ago, but when I click on it, it says five hours ago. So I guess it's sort of a shadow band or I don't know something. Um, so he, he he's probably in and out. He's he's a night owl like me. So maybe he'll get back in. Maybe I can bring him in here and have some good conversation. Um, yeah, so, so outside, you know, at the Apple store, I was sort of excited. I have an old Apple, um, 27 inch display, an old one, um, from 2011. And, uh, I, I got the adapter. It was the exact right physical adapter. It was a USB C to an old Apple display connector. But, um, once I got home, it, it cost forty nine ninety nine. Plus tax, so 51 something. And once I got it home and plugged it all up, it didn't work. Um, I plugged the uh, monitor into an old Mac Mini from that time, and it worked just fine. So I plugged it back into the adapter going into the Mac that I'm on now, and it did not work fine. It didn't even come on. Um, I should have looked at the the box a little bit better, but... It said that it was for a, a Thunderbolt studio display, a Thunderbolt 2 or 3 studio display, not for an older one from 2011. So that didn't work. So I'm $50, $51 down on that. Uh, going to try to get a refund on that. If not, I'll just sell it online for a slight discount so some other poor soul doesn't have to pay $50, $51 and change. I'll sell it for $41 and change and save somebody some money. But I'm sort of disappointed in that. But because, you know, I have this like $1,000 2011 Mac Studio display. It's 27. It's huge. It's beautiful. It's just like all the the old uh, iMacs, you know, except it hooks up to a, a Mac Mini or any other computer from that time. And so it just... It's sitting there. And now I, I did go ahead and boot it back up onto that Mac Mini. Uh, the hard drive was a little bit screwed up, but I was able to, to get it. And even though it's not anywhere near the current Mac OS, um, it still supports some of the software that I use for, for video streaming. Um, I, I use a software called Air Video HD for uh, movies that I have to stream them to my iPhone or to my Apple TV or to my iP iPad. So I was able to get that set back up with my external hard drives and, and the movies that I, and movies and shows and everything that I have stored locally. So I, um, I'm going to use it more of a, as a streaming box, I guess, um, for the time being. So, so I'm still getting some use out of it, but it, I mean, you know, that that, that computer is just too old to really use on a day-to-day -day basis. I am sort of a command line guy, so I don't really require a whole lot of CPU, or uh, I'm not running like big editors like uh, the Adobe software, or Photoshop, or anything like that. 
I, if I need to do that, I can do that on my, my M1 uh, MacBook Air. So, yep. Nobody's gotten back with me. I guess I'm, I'm just going to pause it here. I'll, this will be edited out, but I'm just going to pause it and see if anybody comes back to me here in the next uh, 20, 25 minutes. So I guess uh, Elon Musk... Uh, <laughs> Elon Musk um, is closing on the Twitter deal that started earlier this year. Um, you know, everybody on Twitter, the board of directors, the employees, everybody did not want it to happen. But um, after he pulled back and, and reneged on the deal, um, then they tried to force him to buy it, which they are. But he, he probably called their bluff, and now he is buying it. And then he walked into... Twitter headquarters with the kitchen sink. Um, <laughs> let me let me play this video here um, from Bloomberg. Let's start with the kitchen sink. Let's start with the kitchen sink. Hopefully, our wonderful producers are going to put that video up on the screen. Elon Musk has arrived at Twitter's San Francisco offices. Uh, Oh, just off Market Street, you and I know them uh, well, M. Um, we had reported earlier in the day, according to sources in an internal memo reviewed by Bloomberg, that Musk is going to be walking around the corridors of this office. Staff are being encouraged to say hello to them, uh, to him, when they see Elon Musk. And we're told he will address staff on Friday. As you said in the top of the show, the Washington Post and Bloomberg both reporting last week that Musk was telling potential equity investors in this deal that he would cut headcount by as much as 75%. As I've reported, and morale is not great right now at Twitter. A new piece of news were being reported by Bloomberg. According to sources, some equity investors, not on the debt side, but the equity side, have already transferred their committed capital to Musk lawyers. So it looks like all signs were moving towards this deal closing by 5 p.m. Eastern on Friday. 5 p.m. Eastern on Friday. Elon Musk will be the new owner of Twitter. He tweeted just a little bit ago. I pulled it up on my uh, Twitter Twitter app. I haven't really... Uh, I signed up back when he first started about uh, taking it over. Um, let's see. It's asking me my phone number. Yeah, that's still my number. Okay. So I tweeted earlier... Um, or he tweeted earlier that uh, the bird is freed. <laughs> um, that was about two hours ago, so probably about just a little after midnight. And then I quote tweeted it, tweet quoted it, saying that's the day I've been waiting for since rejoining earlier this year. So around the time he first started talking about taking it over, I've been I rejoined Twitter. I haven't been very active on it. I've posted a few links here to these podcasts uh, that I've done. Um, the Surfshark VPN one that I did back in uh, October 6th, and then the probably before that, it was way back in uh, May of this year, talking about Starlink for uh, Starlink for RVs um, ideas, sort of a and, and <clears throat> there's probably another one after or before that where I, I talked about Starlink for R RVs just generally, and then, then I sort of got nerdy with the second video that night talking about new, different ideas and new ideas for uh, the Start for RVs program. And it would require, like, software upgrades and firmware upgrades to the modems and the dish stuff like mesh, like mesh networking and backhauling, SSID sharing and rebroadcasting, uh, it's a pretty good video. If you go back to May on, on the channel here, you you can see that one. So pretty good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so actually, I'll go ahead and pull up my, my videos here. Go back, go back. And I've done, I guess I've done a number of Starlink launches. Video about the Challenger, SpaceX Starlink launches. I've done a couple of launches here. I, f I totally forgot about all these. Uh, my Russian YouTube friend, when your lighter dies at 4, four in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, you've already been drinking. You can't light your cigarette. Dead. Nah, but it's dead. Got to go in and turn on the stove and light up a paper towel to light my cigarette. So, yeah. Yeah, that was that was a interesting morning. Um, 
talk about a friend of mine passing, life short, don't hesitate. Some of these aren't public anymore. Me and my survival friend, uh, <clears throat> Waza, give me his point of view on, on, on stuff. Okay, there it is. Starlink for RV ideas, ground, mesh, backhaul. And then I did another one. It was an update, Starlink Internet for RVs. So that was talking about the basic Starlink for RVs program. And then, uh, then I did a nerdy, just random idea one after that i guess i got a decent number of views i mean for for a channel as small as i am um i'm only 282 subscribers so on those i got 88 views and 54 views um so that's a fraction of my channel from you know i don't know uh 80 88 of 288 so that's uh more than a third i guess of my channel watched that video or YouTube didn't just came across it. So that's not too shabby. I guess if I had a million subscribers, that would be like 600,000 views, you know, equivalent. So I'm not complaining. And then, yes, I guess some of the older ones I have, you know, I have a good one here. It was uh, from RT uh, TV uh, stories of black Americans who fled to the Soviet Union back in after the Civil War in the old days. That was fascinating. The copyright struck me, even though it's from RT. I get, even though the sanctions and everything, I, I, I didn't think I would get a copyright strike from Russian TV here on the on, a, on the American YouTube system, but they still gave me a copyright strike. It's still I don't know if it's visible or not. Mm. I guess it is. He made history. But I'm not going to, I can't monetize it if it takes who, off. Uh, went to Soviet Union in, in the 1930s, uh, found great success. You look at Lloyd Patterson and uh, his it's son, James super, Patterson. Super, super fascinating story of African Americans who fled to the former Soviet Union, like I said, after the last civil war. And, and then their extended family who still live in America going over to visit them and and finding great I don't know, great experience there and they want to move there, but they have to learn learn the Russian and learn the culture. Russia's pretty strict on immigration. You know, you gotta show you have money in the bank, you have to show that you're somewhat fluent or have a good understanding of their language and so on. Unlike America where you can just like cross the border and you're in. You know, we're not going to get into that politics, but yeah, I got a lot of good old videos here. Um, you know, all when, when I look at the number of views that I got compared to the number of subscribers, it's a pretty good percentage. You know, I, I posted this Captain Fantastic sweet child of mine at the end of the movie that has like 1800 views. That's more subscribers. So that sort of went out there and, and again i think they copyright struck it let me i can't really on, on this screen see what the settings are but i don't think they're going to copyright this part they probably won't until the music starts but it's a great movie i'm not really great movie i'm not gonna let it get into the music part because i know they'll copyright me again but uh i recommend that movie there's a couple friends of mine now that that's one of their favorite movies of all time um Vigo Mortison and him and his in the movie him and his wife uh, he he was they don't really tell his backstory so much but her backstory is that she came from sort of a rich um, small town Baptist type family religious family who were like upper well upper middle class politically connected and so on but she fell in love with him and they moved out to like the the northwest like up in oregon and washington state and 
had all these kids, you know, like six or eight. I, I forget how many kids there are in the movie. It's a lot. But <clears throat> they move up into the forest and teach the kids, like, survival. But on top of, like, survival and everything, they teach them languages. They teach them, uh, you know, all the different political systems and social systems and, and everything. So the kids are homeschooled, uh, natu- you know, just free-ranging children. And it's uh, just a super, I guess if anybody on, but it, on any side of the political spectrum would agree, that would be the lifestyle that they would want their children to have. You know, whether you're sort of, you know, in, in the movie, the movie, it's sort of, you know, liberal. You know, uh, the kids are talking about like, you know, socialist systems and, um, you know, all the different you know, popular social stuff, but at the same time, you know, they, they talk about capitalistic and so on and so forth. And, you know, they, they sort of grow throughout the movie, the kids, as they experience the world, once they get away from the little commune and everything that their parents built for them, they see the real world and how it works. So we come, they sort of come out of their shell and it's, it's, it's really, really good for people of all sides. Um, I highly, highly recommend it. And all the, all the kids are different, you know, some of them are, you know, actually the, probably the best scene was when he went, I think it was to his, his former wife after she passed his former, his brother and sister-in-law's house. And they, they were like suburban, suburb, suburb people. And they, they pull in and like their school bus, you know, <laughs> they're, they're like, you know, hashtag bus life uh bus and they they load out and they go into the house and the kid you know his brother and sister-in-law's kid they play video games that's really all they know is like video games and middle school and i think the oldest one was like a freshman in high school or whatever and then in one scene um they're talking you know the 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 brother and sister-in-law brother and sister-in-law were concerned about the education of the children and you know how they would experience the world and know you know how the world works and everything. So he, uh, the Vigo, the main guy, Vigo Mortison, he calls in captain fantastic. He calls in like his youngest child and like ask them, what, are, what, what's the bill of rights? You know, it's like first amendment, freedom of speech, second amendment, uh, you know, the right to bear arms and, um, immediately goes through that. But before he asked his kid though, they ask, he asked the other, his brother and sister-in-law's kids, or kid, you know, what's the bill of rights? He thought it was just like, you know, like a, a receipt from a store or something. <laughs> it was it was pitiful that the kids that they're going to public school that that are learning, you know, what they're teaching, had no idea what the bill of rights was. But his child, who grew up in the woods of the Upper Northwest, knew exactly what the bill of rights was, amendment by amendment. And he actually even cut off his child and and. And said, uh, "Don't tell me what I exactly what I taught you. Don't tell me word for word what I what I taught. Tell me in your own opinion what it means." And the kid started to go into it. And then finally, the brother and sister all just cut the kid off, and they went back and played with the others. But it was <laughs> it's probably one of the best uh, movie scenes I've seen in a long time. Uh, I, I probably should do like a reaction video to that because again, it's. Uh, not only one of my favorite movies, but it's a favorite movie of two really good friends of mine, uh, female friends of mine, who I introduced it to, and we we talk about it, we mention it a lot. So um, when we're out at the uh, at the local pub, so yeah, good stuff. It's starting now, I'm about twenty five minutes. So let me pause here for another minute. I, like I said, I hate cutting stuff cutting videos but i'm just gonna pause here for a minute and check my messages well i guess everybody's pretty much asleep so i'll go ahead and um play like a second i hope they don't strike me i'll cut off the audio if i have to such a good scene maybe i'll cut in and out so they don't have a long enough piece of audio so basically to describe this scene, um, I think they actually dug up their mom's body. Yeah. Okay. So after the 
Christian funeral that uh, uh, the main character's wife wife's family gave her. They they actually went to the cemetery, dug up her body. They took it out to this picturesque, beautiful scene, and you know here in the upper northwest. I mean, yeah, yeah, on this little plateau overlooking a, a lake up there somewhere, and and her her last wishes were to be cremated and flushed down the nearest toilet. <laughs> so that's what they're doing now. They're cremating her. And then uh, they sing like a really good rendition of uh, Guns N' Roses' Sweet Child. So good. Mom, who's your favorite song? Got the little drum kid. Sort of like one of the videos I posted earlier from a local family here in uh, Kentucky. I mean, he just put a break in there for copyright strike purposes. Another one. Then they just, it, it goes on. Yeah, on and on. Then they all get into it. That's a, that's a great scene. I'm just going to skip through it. Hopefully, nothing long enough for them to strike me. And this is the scene I'm talking about. <laughs> so, so I guess it's uh, Vigo. Okay, six kids. So there's six. Of them. They're all just great kids. And you'll see through the movie. <laughs> It was like a, a scene in, in the when they first left the compound they lived on. Um, they were uh, in the bus and and they got they they were just like bored and they were talking and and the kids even know multiple languages. You know, like one of the daughters was speaking like Esperanto and 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 Vigo said like you you can't speak that language unless like two or more of you can speak it. You know, so no Esperanto. Esperanto's out, so I think they switched to, like, Mandarin. And, <laughs> you know, they're just, again, super intelligent kids. And, and you know, I've talked a little bit about my daughters. And, and you know, they, they get on Duolingo, and they 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 learn languages, um, you know, Spanish and Russian and German. And I think my youngest daughters get sort of into French right now because her mom was. And, um but, you know, I know a little bit of all of those languages, so when they're here, I can sort of switch over to them. Just a little bit, like a phrase here, a phrase there, a couple words here and there, numbers, stuff like that. So it's fun. So without even, even before I watched this movie, I sort of, that's the way I sort of wanted to raise my children, you know, with curiosity about uh, languages and culture and so on and so forth so let me let me go ahead and play a little bit more and like i said their mom her last wishes were to be cremated so this is them looking over the toilet in the airport when they poured the ashes in and flushed her down the nearest toilet <laughs> actually i'm gonna mute it so they don't strike me but you'll, you'll see them you know <laughs> pouring stuff in so there we go there's the ashes Yeah, there's the pile. <laughs> and they're celebrating her life. Hold on, let me, let me back that up a little bit. There was a like cool little... Bye, Mom! Bye, Mommy! <laughs> let me play that again.
Bye, Mommy. <laughs> That's what she wanted. That's what the mom wanted. Love you. Why are you going to Namibia? Sorry, guys. I'm just cutting this up. I don't want this to be like strike your band. But the oldest son, uh, he got accepted into numerous colleges, MIT and Stanford and so on. But he decided to go uh, like on a Peace Corps type or a, uh, yeah, like a Peace Corps type thing to Namibia. And that's the, the youngest here is asking, yeah, why are you going to Namibia? I just put my finger on the map. When you're sick with a woman, be gentle and listen to her. Treat her with respect and dignity, even if you don't love her. I know. Always tell the truth. Always take the high road. I know. Living each day like it could be your last. Drink it in. Be adventurous, be bold, but stay with it. Go sad. I know. He's ready. Don't die. Don't die. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Good kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's your oldest. Oldest leaving the nest. Five more to go. My oldest just turned 17, my daughter. So, probably have a talk like that with her here probably the next uh, six months to nine months before she gets out of, you know, out of high school and out on her own. She has a October birthday like me, so she'll probably be close to 18 by the time she's out of school. <laughs> Good scene. Stick it, man. stick it to the man. <laughs> Department of Homeland Security. Off to Namibia. Yeah, that's good. That was one of my videos that I captured so long ago. So uh, Let me check my phone again. Nobody's come back. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and cut this video off, edit it a little bit, upload it. I appreciate anybody who came in. You know, sort of random. It's very random. Again, you know, like the, the title of my channel, DC Entropy. I just sort of start off with a topic and it just sort of delves and devolves into uh, into entropy uh, over whatever period that I'm doing. And I'm 30, 35 minutes in now. So let me go ahead and um, say good night to everybody. Uh, Tonight, well, I guess it's Friday now here on my side. It's 3.03 in the morning. I got to be up probably around uh, 12.30 for a 1.30 meeting this afternoon. And then uh, probably hang out in town for a little bit, visit some people, and then uh, come back out my way for a beer share. Uh, me and some friends get together and drink a bunch of good craft beers, so I'm going to probably meet up with them later this evening and... That'll be my weekend. So everybody have a good night. And as usual, <laughs> good night and peace out.